Hi there, one and all, and a very warm welcome to Saga's Not Going Out Club's Write Time. Time to write with me, Tony McHale. This is our fourth session. It's amazing, isn't it? How time flies when you're in lockdown. Anyway, if you missed any of the first three sessions, here's a quick recap. The first session was all about the idea. The idea for the story you want to tell. And we wanted you to put the idea down in one sentence, maybe two maximum, to keep you focused on what the idea is. And those two sentences are going to be there from now until the time you finish this piece of work to constantly remind you what the idea is you're writing. The second session was all about the development of that idea, not in a linear fashion, but in a creative fashion so that you jotted down anything that was relative or relevant to those two sentences, so that they slowly it became a fuller story. More and more was added. A lot of this could be jettisoned at a later stage, but for now, get down everything you can think of that is relevant, and we can get rid of whatever it is en route. So that way you develop into a fuller story without realising you're developing the story and without having that awful blank page to stare at. And the third session was all about character. How do you write, develop a fully rounded, three-dimensional character? Well, we talked about doing biographies and doing extensive biograph biographies of your characters so that you knew exactly who they were, where they'd come from, and what they liked and disliked, etc., etc. So that's where we are so far. That was the first three sessions. We're now on number four. Uh, by the end of session six, hopefully you'll have the tools in place to go off and write your very own book, your own stage play, your own TV drama, your own radio play, whatever. So... Here we go on session four, but before I do that, nearly forgot it, but let me remember it. The three questions I posed at the end of last session. These are three little teaser questions I asked about characters, and could you name who these characters were? And the first one was, who's the character that plays the salesman in Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller? The salesman... In Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. Yes, and the answer was, of course, Willie Loman. If uh, you haven't seen that play or read that play, then I would advise you to do one or the other because it's a fantastic play. And Willie Loman's a terrific character and a brilliant characterization by Arthur Miller. And the second question was from a novel. And the question was, which character killed his best friend, Lenny Small? Which character killed his best friend, Lenny Small? Well, anybody got an answer? I think most of you will have got that one, which is George Milton from Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And the third and final one was from a description of a character in a film. And the description went something like this. He is a jaded bar owner who wears a dour expression as he drinks and plays chess alone. He constantly proclaims his freedom from all bonds, be they political or personal. But his love for a woman overcomes his cynicism and apathy to become a self-sacrificing idealist. Now, who is that? Who do you think that is? I think you all get that one. Yes, it's Rick Blaine, played by Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. And really, if you haven't seen Casablanca, then you haven't lived. That is a must-see for everybody. So, here, on to number four, on to session four, which is all about nailing the story. We want to get to a position at the end of this session where you can go away and fully fledge out this story so we've got a great basis to work from. So, when you're talking about creating that story and putting it into a cohesive piece, then people will talk about structure. They'll go on and on about first reversals, inciting incidents, uh, climactic this, midpoint that. 
And basically, it's all jargon. Most of it is just common sense. Most of it you'll just do instinctively. So I'm not going to get bogged down in all this jargon at this stage. Also, I'm not going to get bogged down in act structure. It's amazing how so much emphasis in this day and age is placed on number of acts you use. Is it a three act piece? Is it a five act piece? Well, it's a bit weird, really, because all the plays virtually to a man this time are about two acts. They're all two acts. When I first started writing, there were two act plays. And the reason I thought you wrote it in two acts was to give the audience a respite. You know, making them sit through two hours was a bit of a bit of a push. So you gave them a break in the middle so they could have a cup of tea, a glass of wine, a jug of beer or whatever they fancied. So that's what I thought it was. And by looking into it more deeply now, I understand that it really came from a practical reason, did the act structure in plays in, in, this, in this country. And they came because pre-electricity, the stages were lit by candles. And you would watch as the candles went down and as they came to the end of the first candle, that would be the end of the first act. They'd have an intermission, they would replace the candles and off they go with the second act. So it was a practicality anyway. So that's why I'm not going to really get into act structure or any of that jargon. I'm going to tell you a simple thing, that a story has a beginning, middle and an end. And I think you probably all knew that. Beginning, middle and an end. That's what you need to create a good story. And the beginning speaks for itself. It has to be something that attracts the audience, arrests the audience, hooks them in so they want to stay with you. If you're writing a, a play or a film, you've got a little leeway because you've got about 15, 20 minutes before people will start walking out. Most people will give it 15, 20 minutes before they get up and leave because they've spent good money going there. They don't want to waste it. So uh, they'll give you a good chance to get into it. Uh, the difference is on television, of course, because on te television, you've got that infamous zapper so that you're sitting there and on comes the new drama or new comedy. And within two or three minutes, if you don't like it, zap onto the next station, onto the next station. So if you're writing a piece for television, it needs to have a good hook right at the start within the first, literally in the first two or three minutes to get the audience in there and to make sure they stay with you. So that's the beginning. With that beginning, you set up the middle, where you're going in the middle of this piece. And the middle speaks for itself. This is where you're going to develop the plot more. You're going to develop the character arcs. You're going to do the plot twists. It's going to be the more fledging out of this piece of work. More of the story as it drives on towards the end. And when people talk about the middle, they're all different ideas about formats. And I've never subscribed to that either. Because a format can be, uh, say, a diary format. As in Bridget Jones's diary, you know, is totally different, for example, to the colour purple, which is also in a diary form. So trying to align things to a format or a form, I think is very dangerous and also unnecessary. What's more important is you are writing a story that you want to write, because it's about that. It's about you surprising your readers, surprising your audience. And you'll only do that if you start telling a story in the way you want to do and not in the way you've been instructed to do in terms of sticking to some format. And so we come to the end, the end, the climax, the finish of the whole piece. Well, of course, we have to have an end and we have to have an end that is really never going to be satisfactory to everybody because ends never are. But you've got to believe in it. You have got to believe in that end and know that is the end you want to write. Also, my only tip about the end is really know what the end is when you start the beginning. When you start, know where you're going. It will make that journey through the script so much easier. It will give you so much more drive because you know where you're going. I've always known where I'm going in terms of 
writing. It might change, it might alter, it might shift a little, but uh, when you get there, you'll know you're there and uh, the, the piece will be finishing and you'll know you've been on the right journey to get there. So those are they, the beginning, the middle and the end. So before we go on to what we're going to do as an assignment this week, I just want to pose you three little questions again. And this time it's all to do with first lines of novels. See if you can't figure out which these novels are. The first one is, it's a bright, cold April day and the clocks were striking 13. It's a bright, cold April day and the clocks were striking 13. Which novel is that from? And the second one is, when he was nearly 13, my brother Jen got his arm badly broken at the elbow. When he was nearly 13, my brother Jen got his arm badly broken at the elbow. Do you know what that's from? Okay, and the third and last one is Hale knew before he had been in Brighton three hours that they meant to murder him. Hale knew before he'd been in Brighton three hours that they meant to murder him. Those are the three opening lines of three different novels. See if you can think of what they are. You may know them all just like that, or you may have to think about them. But uh, that's a, a little teaser for this week. So what about the assignment? This week's assignment is to write a fully fledged story for you to work from to get to the point where you're actually going to write your script or your novel. And to do that, what we do is a treatment. Now, a street treatment is basically a short story. It's a short story that actually lays out how you see your story working from the beginning to the middle to the end, putting in your characters. So it's introducing all the bits that we've actually worked on so far and making them into a cohesive linear story then in a way that you are going to want to tell that story when you put it down in a script form or in a novel form. So that's what you do. You do about 10, 15 pages, maybe more, maybe less, whatever you feel is right. I call it a treatment because that's what people in the film and television do to sell, to sell their pieces. They write treatments, which are normally detailed storylines of how they see the piece working. And uh, uh, it will be also a piece that they will use to spring off then to write their scripts. I've never written a script or a novel without first having a treatment and having that in detail so that you know exactly where the beginning is, where the middle is, and where the end is, and who the main characters are. I've done it with every script I think I've ever written. I've done it with the novel that's out at the moment, Beckler Street, that was done in that fashion. So I'd recommend it to everybody to sit down, irrespective of whether you're gonna use it as a treatment, as a selling document, but purely as a working tool for you to move on to the next stage which will be very soon to actually sitting down and writing the full script or full novel. So that's this week's assignment. I hope you take it on. It's probably the most extensive one we've done. I, the main thing is do enjoy it if you do it. And uh, I hopefully I'll see you here next week for session number five. In the meantime, remember the rules. Remember the rules, right is right, simple isn't easy. And there are no rules. Okay, hopefully see you next time. Stay well, stay safe. Thanks for listening.